All right. Hey, YouTubers, we are live. Home server show number 267. I'm trying to confuse everybody. I'm getting, a week a, getting a week ahead of yourself. 268, I am. And actually, that would be technically two weeks from now. I'm trying to go back and forth with Surface Geeks. Is that what we're going to land on, kind of an every other week schedule? Trying. Okay. Trying that. It's, oh. it's hard. Yeah. yeah I yeah. feel like I should be doing it. Well, it's better to schedule it and move it up than to try and jam it in and, and have to cancel right. it. So if it's every other week, I can I can kind of plan on that. That's okay. That works for me. All right. Let's roll some audio. Got all kinds of links here. Dun, dun, dun. Lost John's video. John, did you unplug your camera? Uh, he might have muted his video. Yeah, I just muted the video. Okay. Now, right, well, here we go. We'll start. This is the Home Server Show, episode number 267, recorded on Wednesday. It is uh, August 27th, 2014. Welcome back to the Home Server Show. I'm your host, David McCabe, joined by the duo, Mr. Jim Collison and Mr. John Zadler. How are you doing tonight, Jim? Greetings, Dave. Good to see you. Happy Wednesday night to you. Very good to see you. Very good to see you, John. I don't know uh, what you're doing with your video. I'm here. There you are. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi, Dave. Hi, uh, everybody in the chat. It's good to have you back, guys. Good to have you back. So we're going to try every two weeks. That I'll just throw that out there, and then of course I don't know how much that's gonna stick, but we'll throw that out there and see if uh, see if that'll stick. So we'll rotate uh, home server show and Surface Geeks every two weeks. Yeah, you know, Dave, we do that at Gallup with some of our podcasts, and it's actually worked out really well. Yeah. So it's it's uh, every other week has been a good good schedule. We'll give it a try. Well, hopefully I can keep up with that because I have the tendency to. Uh, Either, you know, some news comes up or, you know, i got to roll with something or I just, I feel like i got to do some yeah, We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Well, we've got meetup coming up. Jim, how many days did you say? 24. 24 days. And I was like, oh, 24 days. It's coming up. I better start getting on the ball. I really better start getting on the ball. No, I've got a, I got a, lot, of, a lot planned for us. I'm working on the schedule as we speak with a couple of folks that are going to do some presentations. We've got... Uh, we've got some giveaways actually coming in. I told you I wasn't going to work very hard on giveaways, but a couple of guys have stepped up, and uh, we've had a, a cash donation. We've had uh, uh, so, some actual physical donations. I still have uh, I still have the Synology DS414 Slim that uh, <clears throat> and we're not going to tell Synology. We're just going to give it away. We're just, we're just going to give it away. Uh, that's full of what I say. Those are a terabyte drive. Hey, did you hear the latest news about speak about capacity of drives? I've heard about a lot of uh, big drives. Yeah, Seagate. Uh, this week I saw they announced an eight terabyte drive. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's mental. You don't want to drop that thing. You know, it's like uh, oh, they're very carefully. You know, what are you do? <laughs> I mean, the that's, might that's... scratch. That's so enterprise. That that was on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the list for the news, but that's so enterprise. That's, I think that's beyond a home user. I don't even know if I would even recommend. Yeah. Uh, and it's weird because a lot of, uh, from what I read, well, me, last year, and I think Jim, uh, you even mentioned in one of your previous podcasts, there it's like the average person uses like less than two terabytes of uh, hard disk space. So for these guys to come out with, you know, even now if you're buying three or four terabyte drives, which are starting to become, you know, reasonably priced, uh, I think the sweet spot is like three terabytes. Like it's over. So yeah, I guess it's all for the enterprise guys where they're trying to, you know, they don't want to add a whole new rack of, uh, of uh, you know, a server box there. So it's like okay, start, you know, rotating out the drives and put the eight terabytes in there, and hopefully they, you know, the heat is, uh, you know, the power is down because you know that's that's the other thing you could expect usually is, is yeah, the capacity will go up. But then the speed will be quicker, and then the power will be more efficient, and and, and it'll be run cooler. That's what we come to, uh, you know, to uh, to want. We're selfish, I guess. Yeah, eight terabytes. 
I, I think we're just going to have to just leave that with the Enterprise. Yeah, it's At crazy least, how yeah. some of these guys use these old. You know, they try to put these eight terabyte drives and or this even a four and the six terabytes in old hardware. You know, it's like uh, you know, because you got the SATA two, SATA three speeds, and I think these ones are six gigabits per second. Like you know, you, you kind of figure, would you take a six terabyte drive and put it in a in a machine that only has a you know one point five uh, gigabit speed uh, you know bus and stuff? It's like. It's like, guy, upgrade your hardware. If you're gonna go for the bigger drive, up, upgrade that hardware too. It's like some of these guys, you know, who I see, they still try to, you know, set up Windows Home Server on the, on the, on the 286 or XT machines. It's like, guys, you know, they're pu pulling out uh, three, 180 gig hard drives or 300, whatever, 500 gig hard drives. I mean, I'm sure it's hard to find even anything under a terabyte now, just like a, a single drive. Yeah, and and why would you with the Sweet spot right now at one between one and two. I mean, that's really where the most economical storage purchase is made. So, you know, why would you go backwards to get a smaller drive for the most part when it's just as expensive? So, um, you know, and I think SSD is right. If you're going to build a home server and you're in that space, SSD at 50 cents a gig is super cheap now. And, um, and you know, I, I think we debated that a long time ago, but... SSD for the OS, and then I think the two terabytes at two to three is a sweet spot, and uh, load up your load up your drives. Yep, absolutely. Uh, SSD speeds are just it's it's unreal. I mean, we're seeing. I think I was seeing on the deals this week, uh, 240, uh, 240 gigs for less than a hundred dollars. That yeah, that that's just unreal. Unreal. Yeah, Unreal. It's, it's there's no sense. I mean, your OS needs to be SSD from here on out, regardless. That's just the way to build it. You're not you're not spinning it. I do have some, you know, I have a server running 2012. I've got three uh, Velociraptor, you know, 10,000 RPMs in a in a you know in a RAID configuration off the board that's running the OS, and that thing is fast. But if I had, you know, I did it because I wanted to do it. I, mm -hmm. you know, it, I, if I was doing it in all my PCs, I'd just throw SSD in as the OS and call it good. Yeah, see, that's the, the thing I would look there is also is like when you're building the server, you know, like again with the SSD drives, they're you know they're bigger capacities and they're faster and all of that stuff. So you know, get something that's going to match match your your speed. Because remember the um, like if you're using the micro servers, you know, we had that hack where you can put in, uh, uh, I think, it, bring it up to three uh, gigabits transfer speed. So if you're going to get an SSD, you're saying, okay, I'm buying an SSD for my media smart server to put server 2012 R2 essentials. Okay, well, you know, don't get something that is, uh, you know, four gigabits or five or six gigabits per second, because the the drive that machine can only handle that uh, three, uh, yeah, three, one point five and three. So, uh, and then the thing is, if you're going to use it for your OS, I don't know, I wouldn't go and buy a two hundred, you know, two hundred fifty six gig. I would say give me a hundred twenty or somewhere in that ballpark, as long as the OS could install, because you know, sometimes if you try to install a uh, you know, the OS on, let's say, on the 60 gig or on the 80 gig SSD, you're going to run into problems. You're going to have to start all those batches and those with config files or, uh, you know, CF, CFG.ini files. So it's like, just get a drive. Again, like, you know, you say that the price is reasonably priced. So get one that can install the OS, put the OS there, but then, uh, you know, don't put any data there. Make sure you keep all your data off. And, you know, with 2012 and the home server, you know, what's nice is... Uh, your D drive and your E drive could be, you know, it doesn't have to be on the system drive like in version one, so it's, it makes it a lot easier. So, uh, yeah, and SSD because like they're they're reasonably priced. So go ahead, Dave. You're right. I'm seeing a Kingston Digital on Amazon right now, 240 gig for 99, 94.99. Yeah, that's. I think that's going to become standard pricing now. Um, you know, it has been just. Uh, like the deal price where you'd have to enter like a coupon code at uh, new egg or something like that. But I think that's going to be just standard fare 99 and less for, um, 240 gigs. And I, I wish I would have, no, I don't wish I would have waited. I mean, I've paid, you know, quite, I've paid m more than that for 120, but, uh, it, it's a good time. I mean, if you're, if you need to get into SSD, it's a great time. You might as well get two and stripe those babies. Yeah, I don't know. That that's a lot. I, I still can't get over when you when you guys talk about this. You know, like it's like those these drives are already wicked fast. You know. Yeah. Okay. You know? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you if you're scared of it, don't ever do it, because the first time that you do it and you feel that speed, 
it is just it's unreal when you stripe two SSDs for like your OS. It's I mean it is it's wicked fast. You you cannot believe the boot time and mm. uh, and the response time, especially of your apps. App response time is just fantastic when you're striped. Yeah, well, I guess the good thing with RAID, because I, I, from what I kind of hear is that, you know, because they're SSD drives, they're, in a way it's like, I don't know if it's an old thinking, that, but it's like it's not a, as re reliable as like a RAID, like a disk drive, like, a, you know, a spindle drives, you know. When you put them in RAID, one might fail, or, you know, it's, they're, they're pretty reliable spindle drives, but SSD drives, it's, it's a bit like, you know, when the drive goes bad, it's all bad, you know. There's no like saving it or whatever. So I guess it makes maybe better sense to raid SSD drives. So if one goes bad, well, at least you have that second one, you know, to to pull you out, out of the fire. I've I've done it all. I've I mirrored them. I I feel better when I mirror them and just stay away from the um, the speed, um, especially on my server. Uh, I would never stripe an OS uh, server. I'm just not in it enough. I'm just definitely not in it enough. But, you know, you're doing a, a wicked PC game, uh, you know, a, a wicked gamer, uh, you know, a video workstation, sound workstation. Uh, I don't see any problem with striping them. You know, as long as you have, uh, if, if you're back, especially if you're backing it up to Essentials or 2011, I mean, stripe that bad boy. See what it's like. At least play with it. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, it's fast. It's fast. It's stupid fast. Yeah, you know what it makes me want to do. I usually I uh, <laughs> I'll I'll stripe the OS on a couple of SSDs, and then you're like you pull out you know a big a big platter drive like okay I want to put in my data drive, got to put my apps on this big one, and you're like oh screw that you get on Amazon you order two more like I'm strapping I'm striping my app drive now, so it, it's it's addicting you living on the edge. We like it. Ken's asking that question, you know, anybody running SSD on their as their OS drive on their server and you know, other gym is like, you you know, hey, it's a server. What do you really need it that fast for? You don't. You don't really need it yeah. that fast. But it at the price point, you know, when we're talking about setting up these servers, especially with Windows Server, where it does best and it won't grow much beyond, you know, if you if you've got especially at the two forty price range for ninety nine bucks, right? If you're gonna pick up a 240, it's never going to grow beyond that size anyway, unless you're doing crazy things with it. But if it's just your OS, and, you're, and especially with 2012, even 2011, all that you're shifting all that data to your spinning drives. And so, you know, you, you throw that in there. It's reliable. It's fast. It's responsive. Why not for the price point, right? Why, if, it, if you're buying drives, don't buy spinners for your OS drive at this point. It's just not cost effective for because the smallest spinner you're going to find is 500, 500 gig. You'll never use all that, and you'll have crappy performance. For the same price, you can get a 120 or a 240. Basically, throw that in there. That's why you would do it right now. It's because it makes economical sense right now. And sure, it's faster than it probably needs to be, uh, but it it you can, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. There's two. Two sides of that coin. Two sides of that coin. By the way, okay, the 414 Slim that I'm going to give away, it's not one terabyte. It's 8,455 megabytes. That's a one terabyte. That's odd. Yeah. Oh, no, that's what it really is. <laughs> that's what is. it says. They're, these are yeah. Toshiba's. So yeah, yeah. This one, if you're on video. It's truth and storage, right? Truth and storage. There's a stack of drives we're giving away. You can see the reflection of the blue LED on the camera. So that's what we're giving away here at Meetup. 2014, and uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. But okay, what I what I do now, and what I recommend is don't buy those big platter drives because first of all, when you're building a server, they're just wasting space. They're they're giving off heat and they're wasting space. You're gonna want something like this. I know you guys remember this. This is the IC Doc MB 9499964678 TW, I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> I was like, wow, good memory. <laughs> no, it's got a uh, crazy part number. So uh, you pop, the, pop that out there. This one just so happens to be uh, a RAID caddy. But you can get just a normal caddy, and you can fit uh, laptop drives in here. So I just happen to have two. I'm buying uh, 256s or 512s. Seems to be 
a real nice sweet spot for your OS. Uh, you can get them cheap, and you can get a couple of them, usually for less than a hundred bucks. And then you buy this uh, Raid Caddy. I don't know what this thing is called. It's IC Dock Raid Caddy. It's got a little selector switch on the outside where you can do Raid One or Raid Zero, and it handles it uh, all. There's a there's a little Raid chip right here on the in the Caddy, so you don't have to do it via software. They call that an Easy Convert Pro. Easy Convert Pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maybe. but Dave, I wonder if those if they update the, that hardware because you know, like if you know, is there like an array in there? You know, if there's a chipset, you know, maybe it's running at a slower speed, and now the drives are getting faster. You know. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, this is for the guys that, you know, maybe they don't want to, or maybe they're scared of running SSDs on their server. And uh, but this is what I recommend. It it fits all in this one big hard drive package. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's got 31 power. Thirty-one bucks on Amazon right now. 31, 31 bucks. Cannot be As a matter of fact, Dave, uh, somebody mentioned in the forums this week, and I think uh, Matt Sawyer, he recommended, he has one of those IC dock boxes, and he recommended to somebody in the forums, they were asking yeah. about, you know, have, do you, has anybody put any SSD drives in their media smart server? Because that's the thing, is with the media smart, they had those ser ser uh, caddies, and, you know, you want to have a, the right kind of kit, you know, their ca caddies are made for the three and a half inch drive, mm -hmm. and... And you know you might buy a caddy and find out that that caddy doesn't fit in the in the media smart uh, server like the trays, so it's like uh you know can somebody at least check with me? So he had the model number. So if anybody's interested, they're just looking in the, in the forums there. It's been the past week there. Somebody mentioned it, and so he said, yeah, he he's got the one of those IC doc guys, and it works in the media smart there. There you go. You it got does. The okay, well, let's just prove hand. it right here live. <laughs> That's the cool thing about the media smart server. It's got a hard drive in it, but it's just a bunch of plastic, and you can pull it, pull it out. So there's the hard drive. Pulls out. Now let's put the old IC dock in here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, I am having the other way around. Yep. What the, what the heck am I doing? Should I have a storage podcast? Wow, John, you you saw that through the camera. I was like, why isn't <laughs> this line up? Okay, that was easier to get in than the, than the freaking hard drive. <laughs> Works this way. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Perfect. No, it's a great. Yeah. That's now that's... it's to make sure that they line it lines up with the uh, with the back plate. You got part one done. At least uh -oh. the pins go into the tray. Now it's to make sure that it's it goes into the pro server properly and that you can lock it. Ow, I just ripped out Come my on, headphones. Dave, you didn't keep that 470 <laughs> there for Slide nothing. You know? Hopefully I'm not going to break the back plane. <laughs> yeah. uh, so for it's you guys on audio, you the media that smart ex 470 yeah. If you break the back plate, then it's, it'll Line be up, up on your next oh, garage. There it went. It seated just fine. There you go. Okay, now I need some more stuff on my desk for sure. That's why everybody comes here for the answers. <laughs> what? Sorry, I just got my headphones back in. I said that's why everybody comes here for the answers. So there you have it. More stuff on my you desk. Know, you know, Dave, I had one of those icy dock, um, you know, uh, those uh, the docks, and yeah. I put too much pressure on. I was plugging it in with a cable. You know, I wasn't putting it in something. I was actually attaching a cable to it. And I felt like it. I wasn't getting a good connection. And I put just a little too much pressure on it, and I snapped that connector right off the bottom of it. You what? know, there's which one? That, that right there. Just pull that out of the, pull that out there, and then the connector where you put the SATA connector in there. Yeah. So I was putting a SATA connector on the on the large one, right? That's the data one, and I just put a little too much pressure on it, pushed a little too hard, and I bent it right and broke it right off. Right in the. Yep. Did it break in the middle between the two connectors? It did. I've seen that no, before. No, actually, the whole the whole thing, power and all, broke right off. Jesus, Jim, what but were you was, doing? I was putting too much pressure on it. <laughs> I'm gonna own you, by God. I just You're got good. done working out, and I was feeling pretty good about myself. <laughs> and, You're all uh, amped up. I well, I have a tendency to put the damn things in backwards, but <laughs> they don't work that way. <laughs> it will definitely not, not line easily, up. Anyways, no. yeah. Yeah, so I'd be careful. I'd say be careful. They don't, it, you know, there's no uh, stop plate on there, so just, just treat it like a hard drive and uh, don't snap that off. I just rip the pins right out. 
I was disappointed too. That was back in the day. That was a seventy-five dollar when those things yeah. first came out. They were like yeah. seventy-five bucks. I paid good money for this yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. And no, you know what? This thing performed uh, Windows Home Server twenty eleven for how many years did I run that? It four years, yeah. maybe. So I need to put this back in action. It deserves to be put back in the action. And well, you can see right here, well, this way on video. That's my stack. I still haven't done anything with my stack. That's my 2011 stack of drives, which is, I mean, it's old now. Everything is on 2012 Essentials R2. But it's fun to get this out and play with. Yeah, no, it's a good, and it's still, I think, a really good, especially when we talk about SSDs, it's a really good tool. And, uh, you know, it's SATA 3, and so it, it, um, it, if you're, if you're going to stripe a couple, put them in, stripe them, bam, you, you're set. Right there, and yeah. I think it'll do it right. There's some settings on that thing that determine yeah. what the rate is, right? Yeah. Just uh, put in a, a little uh, eyeglasses screwdriver, and I'll put the focus on me, and it tells you there's four little, ooh, yeah, four little, little settings. Little focus, focus, focus. Stop looking at me. It's not gonna focus. That's all right. Um. Yeah, it's got blue LEDs. All of the blue LEDs are on the actual this side right here where you power it was a, and say Yeah, that was yeah, a dumb. That was a yeah. bad design. I, I I think I wrote that up at one point or we talked about that yeah. early. That yeah, you because you want to see those blue lights. But exactly. they're in the back. Maybe I tried to put it in backwards, but at least I didn't design the <laughs> damn thing backwards. <laughs> it needs one of those tubes, you know, that they would yeah, yeah, that yeah. would bring the the, the light. The light to the tubes front. And yeah. Arc it around. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of room. You could do it. But these are Seagate Momentous 5400 RPMs. I bought 250 gigs, and I uh, mirrored. I used this as a mirror. I did not stripe, but I had this as a mirror. Both of these survived my um, my server. Survived me, I should say. If you've got a board, if you've got a motherboard that's not going to support that OS, you know, uh, RAID 1, and you want, you want to mirror them, that's a perfect, for 30 bucks. that's a perfect way to do it. <clears throat> set it, put it in. It takes one SATA port. Maybe your board's low on yeah, or, SATA. Yeah, or you're one port shy. You're right. just one port shy. This is one SATA port, two drives with the mirror. That's usually how I ended up is one port shy. Yeah. yeah. You never know when you're going to be one port shy. One port shy. Like, man, hey, cannot... Dave, uh, you still have a Synology box? No? Which one? I've know, been through Synology boxes like I've been through underwear, John. Yeah, because you you guys talked about that uh, that hack there that they were talking about, or not the hack, the virus there for on Synology Synology boxes. Remember that one that went around yep. for the yep. PCs there and all of that, and it came up uh, also on the Synology box. I think they said you have to have version 4.0 and hot or higher, something like that. Did you guys uh, cover yeah, that? Yeah, they um well what they did is um they. They just shipped an update, so anytime your uh, your disk station says, "Hey, I, I've got an update," yeah, do it because yeah, it's got that. It had that little heart bleed stuff where people were getting yeah. into, it. and they just recently had some hack action going on, so they had to do it again, saying, "Hey, uh, update, please." <laughs> but yeah. the the Synology is pretty quick. The, those guys are pretty quick about saying. You know, update update your box. It always emails you. It always alerts you. Once you get into the uh, um, your disk station manager, it tells you, "Hey, I have an update." There's a little flag. And actually, they just had a brand new update. I can read you. Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, there is Tony stuff. saying, "Yeah, sync sync locker, Cinco locker." Cinco, okay, Cinco locker. Yeah, they. Uh, Thanks, Tony. So 8.26, they had an update, so that was just yesterday uh, on this recording. Uh, they upgraded SSL. Uh, they did some OS fixes. They did some ACL fixes, uh, NFS, restores, and DHCP server. So it looked like a, a pretty big bug, a pretty big they, bug list. They covered all the acronyms. <laughs> They did. They got them all. We got your SSH. We got your DHL. We got your DNS. We got your DHCP. So version 5, update 4. If you're a disk station user, you definitely want to go out and get update 4. Which, um... Yeah, before you get bit. Because once you're bit, you're bit. Once you're bit, you're bit. But the, um... 
the Cinco Locker, I think, was update three. And that was in July. It was update three. So most everybody updated when we uh, put the word out. So I'll put that link in the show notes anyway. Lease notes. Okay. Have you tried the new? Uh, you ha you're running my movies. Have you tried the the new version 5.1 or 5.01 or 5.1? And I tell you, my movies. I ha I haven't touched that in so long. I, I I feel like I've almost neglected the poor thing. Um, mm -hmm. I ripped a Blu-ray. I did a test. I put it on uh, my 2012 Essentials R2 server, which is actually on a 2012 server, which has the role. Uh, Essentials role established on it. Yeah, uh, so I can yeah. yeah, so Just I can run virtual that. machines and not feel guilty that I, you know, I can run more than one or two. Um, and I put my movies on there, and I threw a Blu-ray in, and I ripped it because that was one of the things that was I was having so much trouble with on 2011. It was just the OS was just so gunked up with stuff that I've been doing for years and years and years for that podcast for this podcast. And um, it just wasn't playing anymore. It would it wouldn't rip. It wouldn't do anything. So uh, I ripped uh, I ripped the Blu-ray, and I kind of put it away. I never even I never okay. even played it. That's if they have, right now they have the 5.1. I think it is. Maybe the guys can uh, uh, tell me which one uh, for sure. Because uh, it's a pretty good increase. Because uh, what were they? The guy uh, Brian Binner up. He was actually on. Um, Entertainment 2.0, their podcaster, mm -hmm. he was talking with uh, Richard Gunther. And uh, he had actually talked about it before the, the 5.1 was released. But really, the story is that with the 5.1, it's released to the guys who have, uh, who like Vinyl Freak and like yourself who have a license. And, you know, so all these guys are running this preview. And you like you can test it out. And then uh, it still hasn't been finalized. And once all you guys like, kind of get through it, then it will be re uh, released to the general public, you know. And uh, apparently, uh, one of the changes is now because uh, a lot of the people, uh, you know, they like the XBMC where they have their own cover art and th that type of thing, you know, and it shows them that way. Whereas my me, uh, my movies kind of shows you like as if you know you ha you have a DVD collection and you're showing the person here's the case, this is what it looks like, and they want to kind of go, you know, get you know go out, go with the times you change the of the times and say look let's give you like a background and we'll have your own cover art and stuff like that. so they're implementing that so if that's how you kind of like consume your stuff where you say yeah yeah I got a you know X whatever an Xbox or XBM I'm running XBMC on the media uh, XBMC um, I mean on a HTPC there's again with those acronyms <laughs> if you're running a HTPC machine or whatever then you're uh, you know you want to try that then you know, give it a try because uh, you know Plex is pretty is a pretty good software and it's got nice stuff going there. So uh, you know, you want to bring your your media your um, uh, my your my movies collection up to like up to you know a level that is like it's you can enjoy all the synopsis and all that information. Then uh, you know, give that a try. Hi. So it's being out there. Oh, 5.1. What's it? Vinyl Fika saying I'm running 5.1 pre-release four. My Windows 7 Media Center box. Rock solid with more features. There you go. Thanks. You know, and, and we, gosh, we haven't watched a whole lot. We'll we'll use Media Center. Um, we'll start using using it again in September. You know, because that's when the live shows uh, start hitting uh, on the regular channels. You know, we're cord cutters, and uh, otherwise we're we're Netflix. We're doing Netflix. We. My wife and I, we don't watch a whole lot of TV, but we just started like uh, Orange is the New Black, that okay. little series on Netflix. You know, we're just like, hey, we heard about it. Let's try it. Let's play it. And I'm on my second run through Breaking Bad. So I've, I've, I've got three episodes to go on Breaking Bad uh, to run through that again. So that's, that's the TV that I watch. Because, you know, the thing is you want these, the software to be, like, reasonably priced and to do a really good job. Because, again, I guess, you know, as time goes by, we're getting more spoiled. And you know how, like, let's say, you yeah, you go on Netflix and you choose, uh, you know, you're Breaking Bad and you you have your album cover and, the you know, everything is organized in the st shows and all this stuff. And if you start using some program and, I don't know, my movies or media, like, I, I like using a program called Media Center Master. I also, I've been playing around with the iHome server and stuff where it kind of runs out and it gets your metadata and tags everything. You know, you don't want to be 
too, like babysitting your machine too much. You know, it's like I want to set it and kind of forget it and and then and you get a you know a nice experience. Again, Plex is another one. Goes runs out, grabs your data and stuff like that. So you know you don't want to end up getting you know having a, a disappointing uh, you know run uh, time with that with that software and then say you know forget it. I'm just going to go to uh, Netflix or whatever. So hopefully these guys are you know they're they're keeping their game up you know to uh, to give you a good uh, product and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Netflix has kind of ruined me for, um, you know, even putting out any effort. You know, we get movies, the boys will get movies for um, birthdays and Christmas and stuff, and I don't even know if I've ripped them. I, I Honestly, I don't even remember. Um, and now they got, there's just so much access to it now online. Like Disney has this app where if you buy a movie and you, like, put it in the app, and then you can watch it right in this little Disney app. So it's it's crazy. We we just we run Netflix and Amazon uh, Prime. We watch a whole bunch that way. But well, you, you can't watch football, right? No. You can't watch Survivor. Yeah. You can't get your American Idol fix. You can't. You know all that has to come over the uh, the airwaves. So I we still use Media Center. We still use the HD Home Run. We still use. I've I've got the new thing called the Tableau. And uh, that's worked pretty good. And we get that through the Roku. So we can watch live TV right there on the Roku, uh, record it, watch it anywhere in the world if we want to. Some of the guys are in the chat, they're talking about, uh, what did I see, Couch Potatoes, Sick Beard. Yeah, the names yeah. are coming out, Plex. Yeah, yeah then I've, just, I've got to I gotta rip it, you know. Yeah, you're right, you know, they've lost, you know, maybe Sony pulls out. Or... Uh, some studio pulls out of Netflix, and Netflix is not going to be the, the king forever. You know, the the movie studios are going to make sure of that. So, yeah, I would say like you know, definitely copy your uh, you know your old stuff. Like if you like some old TV series, shows, and stuff like that, you know, some of this vintage stuff. Yeah, keep it on your server. Maybe some of the more current stuff. You know, you can download it, and and it's a bit like you know your um, you know. Your casual stuff, you're gonna watch it once in a while, and that's it. Then you know, yeah, use Netflix, and you'll have a nice experience. But if it's older uh, stuff, because like you say, if some guys you know have a con um, contract with like uh, Netflix or uh, Amazon, and they decide you know, okay, uh, we're out, then it's like now you know now you have no you don't have access to all that content anymore. So it, it could be a headache. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, we're old timers there, so we're consuming. You know, we still come from that angle, whereas. You know, I even heard recently they were saying, like, you know, how kids now, they're they are going to their 13-inch laptops. They don't want to go to the 50-inch monitor in the living room. They want to do it off their laptop, and they want to have it quick. And, you know, one kid's in his bedroom watching one. The other kid's in their bedroom watching something else. So you kind of wonder if you're going to have a server and, uh, you know, like how you're going to kind of bring that content in if that's the way you want to go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're still, we're still old school in the fact that uh, if we want, if we like it, we buy it. Um. You know, I can't take Netflix in the car with me. I mean, I could. You know, I could hand the phone to him, but you know, that's just gonna chew up my data. So, uh, you know, you put the you put DVDs. Oh, there's a backup starting. Please don't start. <laughs> don't start. Uh, maybe I just got that notification in the corner. Hey, yeah. I hey, start a backup. Ready, getting ready for a backup. Maybe next time you could ask ask me. Five <laughs> percent complete. It just knows um, you're in the middle of doing home service. Exactly. Now, so it's, it's not like I just turned on the PC. We've been podcasting for at least 30 minutes, so backup did not succeed. Dave, um, I wanted to uh, point out there, somebody in the forums was talking about a, a process that was running on his server there because he said the CPUs was running very high. And then somebody had mentioned W. there was a service running wmpnetwork.exe. And I think um, what that is is like, Imagine this, like who who uses Windows Media Player? That's you know, it's kind of going down. You know, nobody's using Windows Media Player anymore. Just you open voicemail or whatever. You know, everybody's using the built-in Windows 8 app or whatever by default. But because uh, I know uh, Windows Media Player, the network app, like if you set some, there's a settings in Media Player that you could tell it to go and get your uh, content online, like your metadata, and and uh, that's going to take a lot of CPUs. You're not going to do a lot of bandwidth. Bandwidth is more when you're downloading, you know, content or you're uploading, you're you're doing backups. But as far as you know, the CPU being slow on the on the computer, 
uh, I know that this this guy is usually a culprit. So sometimes if uh, that's one thing to look at if you see your server is running uh, you know high CPU and it's like the, the dashboard is opening slowly or whatever, check to see if you have uh, if you're running Media Center if you're telling it to because one of the things also in the dashboard if you notice uh, I think there's settings you open the dashboard there's settings and then there's a it says your uh, media there's a little box that you tick it says re retrieve media online and that's 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 the little bad boy. Because you know you're retrieving it, and it's putting it in Media Center, uh, yeah, Media Player. But a lot of people don't use Media Player, so it's like you know, really, do you should you be using it? Because you know, it's like a software that you're not using, and it it's taking up resources in the background. So that's something to look out for. I wanted to bring that up. You use Media Player, Dave? No. Only when I have to. <laughs> Jim. Media player? No, when not was at the all. Last time you opened that no, up? Never. There you go. Yeah. I mean, I open it only up by mistake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got to click it. something. You're like, it brings wow. up. Hey, would you yeah. like to set up media player now? Yeah, you're like, no, you're that's like, not only when no, it's been associated really. with something, you know? Yeah, right. Like I said, I get nice. a voicemail, and then all of a sudden, media center comes up, and you know, you haven't used it for a long time. When when all of a sudden it asks you, yeah, it says recommended. Uh, you know, how do you want to install it? Recommended or a uh, custom? Exactly. All right. Hey, I haven't seen that for a few years. Yeah, I would just close it at that point. I know you close it, and you're like, oh, I meant to do this other thing. Yeah, that brought back some uh, non-fond memories. Um, boys in the boys in the forums are are chatting up these six terabytes and these eight terabyte drives, and uh, Best Buy's got the six terabytes on the shelf. So I mean, these things are on the shelf now, and I the world is just just waiting to have a world of hurt, you know, rain down on them. If these things are on the Best Buy shelves, and someone takes it home and says, "Hey, I'll just put it all on this. It's big enough." So, well, I think the good news, though, to that is still the consumer. Even though, so they're coming off of drives probably that are 500 to a terabyte, right? So they mm -hmm. only probably have that much data to begin with. Getting to a terabyte is difficult. I mean, you really got to work hard. All of us probably good at it. The average consumer probably not. So. Even if they go buy six and install it, it's going to sit, you know, one sixth full for for most of its life, probably. And then, it and you know, maybe we can talk about this later. I mean, at least cloud storage is catching up to that for the most part, right? Crash it plans is. unlimited. Everybody else is moving to a terabyte for the most part, and so at least there's some catch up there that we're still not dealing with five gig free, <laughs> you know. And you, you've got these six terabyte drives, so it's starting to catch up. Maybe um, warn your families, warn your friends, warn your neighbors, buy them in pairs, and at least, at least get them onto, I say get them onto one drive, but the big news this week is all about Dropbox. Dropbox finally coming into the fray. Who's got that, who's got that link? Yeah, well, I'm, it's if you just go out here, if you just go PC out to Dropbox World. and choose your, you know. Yeah, everybody's got the link. Dropbox in. consolidating its three pro accounts into a single plan. That's ten bucks a month. It's nine ninety nine, uh, and that's one terabyte of storage, and it adds sharing and security. So, it's now SkyDrive. Yeah, it's they caught up. It's weird. They just, I mean, like in one day, boom, boom. no tiered. They're just like one terabyte. Here you go. We're back because they were the most expensive, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, as of yesterday, they were absolutely the most expensive. And now they've joined. And we've with, we've wondered on this show for months, for a year, like, where's Dropbox? Are they not reading the news? Do they not pay attention? What's going they were on? probably upgrading. I imagine what they were doing to make sure they could support, you know, and that's some smart business savvy to say, okay, what's it going to take for us just to catch up to the one terabyte? And then let's not make a bunch of, you know, let's not get people speculating about it. Let's just make sure our infrastructure can support it. And boom, one day we turn that on and there you go. And uh, and it's up to. I won't buy it. I, I've got enough free with them and I use it for sharing. That's, I mean, we're Dropbox's. I think best is because it's the public sharing space. 
that's what I use it for. I would never put anything else on Dropbox. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, that's a little too public for me in a lot of ways. Um, they lost my trust a long time ago. That's just me, though. If you're comfortable with it, let it run. But, um, you know, I, for we were talking about this in chat before. That same $10 will get you an Office 365 subscription and a terabyte of storage on one, uh, you know, on OneDrive, which has got some really good metadata features when it comes to music and pictures and tagging. And it's a good drive. And you're going to also get access to Word and yeah, I said access, get... not access, but you're also <laughs> going to yeah, get not literally access. <laughs> Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and uh and a, a nice big Outlook account with uh, one terabyte of storage on your OneDrive. And OneDrive, it, as well as Dropbox, the Dropbox app will do this as well. Um, I I don't I haven't used it, so I can't say that it does it automatically. But on Android, iOS, and Windows Phone, you can tell uh, OneDrive to send your pictures automatically. So you snap a picture on your phone, straight to OneDrive. So it is your backup repository. So you don't even have to pay, especially if you're on iOS, do not pay Apple to back up your files. Send them to OneDrive and use only the 5 gig free on Apple, which hopefully they'll change that someday soon. But Dropbox, you know, Dropbox has the has the distinction of being, you know, kind of first. They were mm -hmm. kind of first to get into all of the uh, all of the developers, you know, developers really embrace Dropbox, and they, you can't get a WordPress plugin on your WordPress blog without it having some kind of synchronization with Dropbox. You know, whether it's dropping a file, it's cloud syncing via via Dropbox, or you, you know, there's backups that go to it. You know, everything uses Dropbox, and I used it for the longest time, the longest time, and then. Yeah, Jim, you know, things happen to them, and I, I slowly work them out of my life. I, I have an account. I probably should even look at it, but uh, I don't run. I might have I might have the plug-in on one of my PCs around here somewhere, but I don't use it. Well, I don't it's, use it at all. It's great for sharing because I think it's – they really have a great interface for, for people, who the average guy, so to speak, and it's simple. And I just find, you know, I'll say, hey, well, let me share this with you on OneDrive, and they'll be like – OneDrive? One I mean, drive. the average guy doesn't, well, how am I going to, you need a, you know, and you go, well, how about Dropbox? Oh, yeah, I use Dropbox all the time, right? Well, you but know? you don't need an account. You can still share. You no, don't I know. But, you can look right. at it for free. Right. No, I I understand that. And I'm not, a, I'm not a Microsoft fanboy, even though they <laughs> MVP'd me to be one. It's just, I honestly, I feel it's better. I do. I feel it's, I feel it's a better service. I would agree with you, but when it comes to sharing with the average user, Dropbox is just the easiest way to go. Yeah, most people use it; they know how to use it. There's zero, you know, zero resistance to it. They're not like, oh, I've got to get a new thing, or I have to know a new. They know. You say Dropbox, they get it. Yeah, and so it's just one of those things that uh, super simple. So for stuff like that, if we're just sharing, you know, a lot of times I'll share MP3s with, you know, where I'm doing some podcast consulting or something. I've done some edits. I'll share those, maybe some files, what have you. Um, but the serious stuff, you know, all on, um, I had about 200 and almost 300 gig of space on uh, OneDrive. So I've just pretty much moved anything I want to keep. I've uh, I've moved out there. Yeah. Dave, it's like VHS and Beta. You know, Beta was a better product than VHS, but everybody migrated to VHS. So, uh, well, you I know think... what? Microsoft owns a lot of Beta tapes. Let me tell you, <laughs> a lot of damn Beta drives and a lot of damn Beta tapes. A lot of Beta products. That's yeah. uh, that did that were better. HDs. Yeah, yeah. I know. Right on. Yeah. They didn't go Blu-ray. They went HD DVD. Um, what were you gonna say, Jim? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. Um, I don't know either. You know, one thing that you don't do, though, if you're sharing a file with Microsoft, you definitely share it with OneDrive. You don't share it with Dropbox. So you got to send it. You know, you got to pick and choose who you send stuff with. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the challenge. We, last week or two weeks ago, we talked about all these. Now there's a plethora of services. We talked about um, Jolie Cloud and, and uh, um, 
how do you pronounce that? O T I A X O. I call it Otixo. Otixo. I still yeah. like my Otixo. Otixo works. Multi cloud. Found a new one this week called Cloud Fender. That Cloud Fender. C L O U D F E N D E R. Fender. Yeah. So cloud like Fender. the cloud has this round thing on the front. Yeah, this big that keeps the mud from coming up on your back. Right. <laughs> so it protects you from right from mud well. And it's debris. an enter yeah. It's an enterprise solution that the, their angle is that hey, in the enterprise, the worst thing is these all these cloud storage offerings, because your data is leaking out to Dropbox, to OneDrive, to Google Drive, to uh, Evernote, and there's no control. And a lot of IT departments have just shut off that access. Okay, mm -hmm. here's how we're going to handle it. You just can't go there, right? Everything's well. That's these guys are like, hey, that's not necessarily practical, and I kind of believe that. So there, there's all these integrations now where you would, an organization would purchase an, an option, an enterprise option with these guys. Then at work, you could connect through your OneDrive or to your Dropbox or to your Evernote through it, uh, through their software. And they can track if it's your, if their data, if it's, if the company data is leaving, you can get permission access to these folders. You get secure access to them. It, it's just a, it's kind of a change in philosophy of other words, before, most organizations can't trust Cloud Drive. Now they're saying, hey, here's a layer on top of it that will help you manage all these cloud offerings that you have out there. Because um, most op most uh, larger IT companies, yeah, they've got SANS and, you know, they've got local storage and stuff. But with mobiles, with workers more mobile and everybody, you know, everybody all over the place, it is interesting that we're starting to see all these services now pop up that not only manage all the different cloud offerings, so you know, being able to put them all together in one place, which I think is great, but now these guys at CloudFender are starting to think, okay, how do we secure that down now for an enterprise and take advantage of the, of the cloud offerings that are out there? So that's a huge movement. I, we're starting to see more and more of these kinds of um, organizations pop up. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just looking at all the uh, theft, misuse, accidental sharing, Irresponsible behavior, malicious deletion, virus infections, and corporate espionage. Well, virus is one. This is interesting. This is an interesting angle. So, taking care of viruses at the upload or at the when you're moving them internally, right there, starting to sweep for that, which is great. Good thought. No, nobody, other, none of these other providers are doing that. When we talk about these other, mm. at least they're not advertising it um, on there. And um, and then duplication is another one. There, there are some, there's some interesting things they're looking at, or, you know, where are you duplicating your files and, you know, some of, some of those kinds of thoughts. So interesting what they're doing there. Mm -hmm. I can't, I couldn't recommend them. I haven't looked at these. I've, you know, we, we talked two weeks ago, we talked about those other three that I mentioned. And, uh, and I opened accounts with all of them so I could start taking a peek at them. I, these guys are, this is an enterprise play. I probably won't try. They're, and they're just in beta. So yeah, you, you can, have to request an account. Yeah. I'm, I'm scanning through their terms and services. Yeah. Right but it's, I'm not ready to say go with one way or another. Or I checked it out for one hour, and now it's my pick of the week. But <laughs> not, I'm not saying other podcasts do that. But, but um, you know, it, it's... There's more and more and more of these. I think we'll start seeing it as we combine this ridiculous amount of cloud storage that's available to us. Yeah, I was just trying to find who are who is it? You know, you're trusting a lot yeah. to these guys. Yeah. Who, who is this? I don't know. I don't know who's behind it. Could be the government of China. I don't. We don't <laughs> know who this is. Let's see if we get some. Um, they do Crimes. offer a free malware scan too. Cloud, cloud, cloud sync. Let's see, Cloud Fender copyright. Nah, maybe they're their own thing, their own startup. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it's a startup. Who isn't a startup? These I'm a startup. Every morning. Do you have an incubator? That's what. That's the. You know, that's I'm in an new, incubator. Yeah, incubate. that's kind of the among the startups. I'm in an incubator. All right. Hope it's warm in there. <laughs> awesome. Cloudfender.com. Okay, we'll put that link in the show notes. Just in case you want to check it out. Check it out. Um, let me uh, let me come back around, and we're gonna take a couple topics in the forums. But uh, meetup is 24 days away, and uh, we're sitting at 34 registrations out of 55. I've got 55 open. We've got 34. 
lovely people going to come to meet up, so we're going to have a pretty good time. Um, like I said, I'm working on the schedule, working on the giveaways, working all, on all the little details that you know you have to do to pull this thing off. So that's kind of when I kick it into gear is uh, September. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready. I got like my to-do list. I've been kind of banging away at to-do lists. So if you're coming to meet up and you'd like, you need some table space, you'd like to present something, please uh, email me podcast at homeservershow.com. I'll get you the space you need. I just want to make sure that I have it for you. And I want to make sure that I have not only time for you, but time for everyone else as well. This year, um, I'm not, I'm not going to fill your day with talk and lectures and, and, and that kind of stuff. And we, we, we have it in the first place. But it's, uh, I'm going to kind of open it up a little bit more this year and say uh, have definitely more uh, roaming around time. Uh, we found that like the biggest, the biggest fun time was like after the presentations when people could go one on one and ask a question. They could go to a screen and say, "Hey, but what, what if this? What if I do this? You know, try it out." So we're gonna do more of that. I think that'll be fun. I think it'll be good. You know, we we won't have to. Yeah, I think everybody's looking forward to that. So it'll yeah. it'll be some some more open spaces, and um, you know, we'll play some music. And yeah. are the Microsoft guys coming? You know, I've I've been threatened by a couple of them. Okay. That they're coming. That'd be good. Good to have yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. We might okay. let them present. We might let them even actually come into the room. <laughs> no smoke allowed, though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we might. Yeah, we. Well, yeah. I think we're gonna have a surface visitor. Surface two giveaways. We might have a surprise visitor. Surface from, Mini uh, one of the giveaways. Microsoft guys. Yeah, I'm sure they'll bring, bring all the mi minis. They got a bunch of them. Yeah. Sure. Uh. Sure, those are just laying around. I think they, they, they want to unload the Surface 2s. Uh, uh... yeah. <laughs> I actually, I've got some cases. Um, Freedom Case is a big Surface case uh, manufacturer for the Pro 2 and the Surface 2. Uh, I don't have those sitting close to me. Um, I'm going to be given... Uh, I think three, three or four, two, three or four of those away. And I've got this other thing that will, uh, I forget the name. I'll get them in the show notes. A little uh, bag thing. I think you could put a Surface Pro 3 in. And uh, you could put anything in there. You could put a little MacBook or something, maybe. Laptop, Dells, you name it. So there'll be plenty. There'll be plenty to do, plenty to see, plenty to give away. And uh, we're gonna run. We'll run to the Microsoft Store again, and we'll raid that thing, and you guys can play uh, Xbox One and and have a good time. It'll be good. Yep. It would be good. Okay. Um. So there was this post out in the forums, and uh, fairly new guy, running 2011, and he was contemplating uh, going over to 2012 R2 Essentials. And basically, his his post was just like, "Should I or should I not? What do you guys think?" And I thought that was uh, I thought that was pretty interesting, just as a, as a conversation piece. And um, he said he's using uh, StableBet on his 2011, and he was asking about storage spaces. So you know, there's point one to take. And then um, he was asking about uh, scheduling backups and uh, USB drives and stuff. So there's 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 more server problems. backups in particular. Yeah, server yeah. backups in you particular. to take those off site. And so I thought, man, this is perfect for John. This is perfect for John. Um, it's 2011 in the ring with 2012 R2, and uh, it's it's ring the bell time, and and it's time to duke it out. I don't know if we've put these two head to head before but it's time so john i'll just i'll just start with you man i i mean the the elephant in the room is how you get 2012 essentials well i guess the easiest the best way way to go is to get yourself a, a technet or msdn because technet is, doesn't exist anymore or i don't know if you can renew them 
but yeah, get an MSDN subscription. Get your because uh, you know you're using it for local. If you're gonna use it for business, then yeah, then you know spend the whatever. For, I think you can pick it up for four hundred dollars, unless you buy. Uh, if you go down the road where you decide you're gonna buy yourself, uh, the Western Digital has the the DS fifty one hundred and sixty one hundred, and those come right out the gate with R two essentials. So maybe that book that. Uh, boxes, uh, but they got the enterprise drives, four drives, you know, maybe a thousand bucks or twelve hundred dollars. But then you got the OS and everything is working, and and you're good to go. You're, but uh, you know, some people, if you're going to use it for a home, I find it's still a little bit buggy. There's some stuff going on with R2, uh, 2012 R2, whereas home server version uh, 2011, there, like that, that thing is rock solid. It's like, you know, and, you know, you're going to still be able to run uh, drive pool. You can run the old drive pool uh, 1.3, which I like, but it hasn't been, uh, you know, like some bug, bug fixes or whatever, but it's not like uh, advanced, whereas the, the, the version 2, you know, they got all new stuff and stuff like that. So that still will work on 2011, you know. It's not like, well, I want to try drive pool, the second version, and I'm stuck with, uh, you know, 2012. No, you can still run it on uh, 2011. And then, uh, again, the other thing is if people are a little skeptical when it comes to the domain join stuff, whereas there's a bit of a fix for that, and even, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Paul uh, Brarin, uh, he's, uh, he has his post on his site there, and he's talking about how you can join this stuff, uh, the domain, not join the domain, and, and run it that way. So, uh, you know, if money's not a problem for you, like or, you know, getting the software, then, uh, then maybe try the 2012 because that seems to be you know that's the that's the one that's supported that's the one that's rolling, but uh, if you're talking about media center, uh, well at least it's uh, my movies will work on uh, 2012. Uh, you won't be using your uh, HTPC like you know if you're using a lot of recorded TV stuff, uh, you know and you want to copy it over to your server. Well, 20, 2011 uh, home server 2011 has that all built in. So that's a that's a nice thing going going for that. So yeah, depends what you want to what you want to do. And the other thing was the other big point was um, for backing up. Uh, I think 2012 R2 Essentials has a little bit nicer way of uh, backing up to external drives, and they have like uh, they don't have that problem with the two terabyte uh, backup limit. But you have to re you have to re remember what we're talking about when we're saying the two terabyte backup limit. That has to do with the uh, I think that it's the VHDs. It's like the, um, uh, you know, like your whole OS backup. It's like your, an image backup. So, you know, if you take an image backup of your server, with your OS drive and your data, and you put it on another drive, and then after you want to go and get some files, I don't think it's that. It's not that user friendly. It's not that easy way to easy way to go. To to do it that way, you should try using something like a Cloudberry backup or. Uh, even let me see, because Cloudberry backup add-in, which are, are, are both on the on both platforms, they also have local backup, so you don't have to get the online backup. That's just a, a bonus. And the other one is um, what's in a Keep Vault. I think Keep Vault also does a, a local backup too. So you have those options. And th there you can have them uh, like unprotected, so you can just go to the files, it's on another drive, grab them, and pull them in. So you could just back up your uh, your your shares. And if you if you if you're pointing to like a RAID array, a 10 terabyte or a Job or whatever, you know, bang! You, you so in Windows Server 2011, you don't. It's not a, it's not an issue. It's only an issue when you want to use the the built-in uh, image backup, which is the OS or whatever. I would just use that the built-in one just to back up the OS, because because that's that's where the headache is. The other guys that are backing up the shares, like yeah, almost like anybody can back up the shares, but backing up the uh, the OS is difficult. So either you use the built-in uh, Windows Home Server 2011 or 2012 built-in image backup, or you use something like a Cronus. You know, but now you have to go and you know spend some cash and get the, an, a version of a Cronus that'll back up the OS. So uh, anyway, and then like I said, the 2012 doesn't have that uh, two terabyte uh, limit. If you do want to go towards the direction of backing everything up. I would just I would use something like drive pool. Like I said, I, that's it. I would use drive pool, have it real time, backing up your shares onto other drives, or even if you want to do it in the evening, I think you can set the timer that say just back that up later on, and then use the built-in uh, stuff. So I don't know if I covered everything. Well, I think we've eliminated. God, I I mean, just the cost alone just the cost alone has to eliminate at least half of the people listening right now saying, I can't do it. 
I can't do it. I can't pay four hundred dollars for the OS and then you know Cloudberry charges more. Say you want that. Um, I think it's it's thirty or forty bucks for the um, for the home home license, and I think it's almost double yeah. for for the business license. Yeah, and then you know you're only using it for if you if you're using it for local, because I mean you have to pay for the add-in. You're up your um, your band, and then obviously you have to pay if, you know if you're limited with bandwidth and stuff. And you know it's like where are you going to put it? So if you have an Amazon S3 or you have a, you know an Azure backup, you you, know, you have to pay for storage space over there. So the add-in is one price, and then the storage space uh, uh, is another price. Then the built-in thing, yeah. If you if we talk about like storage spaces, uh, you know, in 2012 R2 Essentials, you have the the option to use the storage spaces, whereas in 2011 you don't have storage spaces. And uh, the last time I checked, right, there's no storage spaces in 2011, is there? Mm -hmm. No, no. Nope. No. So uh, you know, if you want to use storage spaces, you can go, but a lot of people are not. Crazy about it. I think I even have some. I even saw one guy. I like the. He, some guy commented. He said he actually like Windows Home Server version one. You know, backups better than uh, you know like the, the drive pool from there as opposed to mm -hmm. the, using the storage spaces built in stuff. Even though it did get uh, a bit of a cleanup from because the, there was 2012. Uh, yeah, 2012 Essentials and then 2012 R2 Essentials. So they did do a nice bit of a an upgrade for the R2, but uh, some people are still not crazy about it. Yeah, I think there was even a recent uh, update on storage uh, storage spaces that we covered a week or two ago or something. But uh, oh, and yeah. uh, Yoda is pointing out, yeah, that's the bonus thing is the um, uh, well in Windows Home Server 2011, you do have a hot fix for uh, installing, uh, you know, doing backups for um, what is it, UEFI motherboards. That's the new motherboards. So at least they, they you know, before they left the uh, left the show, they they gave us that. But uh, they don't have the built-in Mac connectors for backing up your Mac and Time Machine and all of that. But the, the 2012 and 2012 R2 Essentials, they have they can back up your uh, your uh, your Mac computer. So if you're you know in one of those homes that you have a multi uh, whatever you call it multi-platform, then at least uh, they should get a they should install a connector for Linux machines or something. Linux PCs. I don't know if how you can. Yeah, because there's so many of those out there. Yes, you know, well, you know if they're gonna cover Mac, well, you know, and Mac is only what five percent of the market. Yeah. Anyway, I guess it's bigger than Linux, but. You got that one guy listening right now. <laughs> Screw you, Jim. Yeah, I know. He's, yes. he's, I'm gonna get angry emails. Well, maybe we got one guy saying, "Yes, John said Linux." <laughs> if you're using Linux, you got other ways to back that thing up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't need to tell you how to do it. You've got it. You got it. Covered. You wouldn't listen to us anyway. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, it makes me think. Uh, a few weeks ago, I saw an update pop uh, come around with because uh, there's a Linux version of a server, right? There's a Mahi, I think it's called. Maybe the guys can correct me. I think that's what it's called, a Mahi, and uh, they had an update. I I didn't want to get into it and you know playing around with it there, but uh, you know maybe if that uh, floats your boat, then uh, there's a Linux version of server for you there. I can't say that I would ever recommend storage spaces, especially not after being on uh, stable bed drive pool. So I went from uh, knowingly and willingly, I went from Windows Home Server 2011, uh, RAID 5, so I had mirrored OS and a RAID 5 um, big volume. And then actually I had two other, vol two, I had two 2 terabyte drives that were mirrored. And I was doing, I was just playing around with that. But uh, then I went to, I think I have a four, four two terabyte drives in a stable bit drive pool. And I've been super happy with that. Cannot complain. Got the drive pool, got the, uh, uh, what's the thing that uh, yells at you if there's a sector missing or something? Um, no, so we I lost got, John. Yeah, John just dropped off. Boom, he was gone. I mean, it just, Bam! I know that's cool. Usually you freeze up, you know, and then uh, it drops him. But no, John just—he's gone. So, yeah, you know, the British have invaded Canada. I'm sorry, um, Canada is no more. Um, <laughs> maybe it's a, that earthquake from the west coast is oh, just meandered not. over. Yeah, he'll, he'll be back. He'll be back. But I can't say I would recommend storage spaces. Not after all the horror stories that I've heard and. When there is 
a good product like Stable Bit Drive Pool, and don't forget Drive Bender too. Those guys are still out there, and uh, when you got two good products like that, it's really hard to recommend uh, storage space. You know, I've been using it now for a couple months, not a lot, not ping it. It's a crash plan server, basically the way I built. It. I haven't had any issues. Storage spaces. So yeah, storage spaces. Yeah. For, for for I think for simplicity's sake, it's a it's if you're gonna do nothing, it's it's better than nothing. Let's just say that. And these guys, there's a pretty angry crew out there in chat right now. They would say it's not better than nothing. They would rather use nothing than than uh, storage spaces because yeah. I know those guys have been burned. But um, I've been running it successfully without any problems, monitoring the pool and stuff for for. Four or five months crash plan, which is pretty intense. It backs up every night. I've got a lot of data on there. I've moved a lot of data onto it. I, I just backed up somebody's PC the other day, and they had almost a uh, terabyte worth of uh, pictures that had to be, all, you know, all the way from like one and two K files, you know, really, 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 really small files of like markers, all the way up to, you know. Um, you know, hundreds of megs worth of uh, pictures themselves. It handled it just fine. I got three drives in a storage pool that, and it, it just, I, I haven't had any problems. But I'm the average guy, so I'm just running well, it. Well, let me I'm give you an average guy it. scenario. Let me give yeah. you, a, this is this is what sold me, because I wasn't sold on it, and I tried storage spaces myself. What I did is, and I, th I think this is how you have to recover storage spaces as well. I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure, so you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you will. And um, so I had a test server, right? And I put stable bit drive pool on it. And I had all these drives on it, and I tested and played with it, turned it off. And then finally it was time to build my real server. So I took those drives. I'd completely forgotten about this test, right? All those drives were just data drives, just completely forgotten about them. And the way I, I build my server is like I like to build the OS first. When I boot up, I only want to boot up in that OS drive. No other drives connected because I don't want anything getting lost. Put the OS on a weird drive and you don't know about it, and then two days later you yank it and you, and you kill everything. So I put the OS in there. I build it. Then update it, update it, and then turn it off. And then slide in your datas. Put in all your data drives. Get those uh, all fancied up boot it up, get them arranged how you want it, and then I got the stable bit uh, download file and installed it. And the first thing it said was, Dave, there's a drive pool out here on these drives. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to use that? And for SNGs, that's its and grins for, you know, the grown-ups, mm -hmm. I said yes. I clicked yes. Let's do it. Show me what you got. What what is it? What's out there? And the whole damn thing came back to life. It was just like, hey, I have a drive pull here. Boom. Recovered. So if your server dies, your power supply eats your motherboard. If those drives just come out, put them into a new server, install the OS, install the uh, drive pull, you're good to go. I was like, I like that kind of power. So then I called Drash and I said, Drash, can I have a free license? No. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, it, certainly those solutions are good ones, right? The the you know the the pooling software, and they're not terribly expensive. So you know, no, they're not. I, and I, I, I think if you're kidding. gonna, yeah, you know, no, I think if you're gonna go that route, that is definitely the way to go. Um, you know, from that standpoint. So you know, can you use storage pool? Sure. Yeah, it works. You know, and, and, and does it have some problems when it has problems? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I can't be too mean on it, and I can't talk too badly about it. It's a Microsoft product, but I really have not put it through its paces like I have with either Drive Extender on version 1, Raid on 2011, and I've really put the StableBit product to task here on uh, Essentials R2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think for the price, because we're not talking about, you know, they're, they're not terribly expensive. If you are on 2012, you've already dropped 500 bucks for the OS. You might as well drop the, the, the additional for the drive pool stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Um, unless you're going to get one of those eight terabit or eight terabyte drives and install that in there as a single drive. Just one drive. Probably not. You a better mirror that crap. Yeah. <laughs> well, or if you're pushing to crash plan, that's fine, right? If you've got that in there and you're pushing it up to the cloud, that would work. A single drive home server would work, and you don't have to worry about drive pool or any drive extenders at that point. So that may not be a bad philosophy as well. I, I to go back to what you said though, Dave, five hundred bucks. That's a for most people, that's the breaking point on on Windows Server 2012. They just kind of go. Yeah, I think you eh, can, what, 440? You get a 440 yeah, bucks, maybe. Yeah, for the most part, though. 499 in most cases. Yeah. So I think I, I think you're right. I mean, I think that drops it out. I think Windows, I think Home Server 2011 wins when we talk about simplicity, when we talk about cost, when we talk about the connector. We talk about it now. Where it loses is over two ter or two, uh, yeah, two terabytes, right? Loses for sure on anything over two. It gets complex at that point. But if you, mm-hmm. like I said, most people have less than that, so it wins for them there. Hardware, I think, is one of the few places it loses because it is so finicky and picky, especially on PCs that it's backing up and restoring those from the network. It's a messy, right? Twenty eleven is still really messy. Although I don't know how much more messy 2012 is. I have not done as much backing up on 2012 as I You know what the biggest thing is? The the 8 gig of RAM limitation in 2011 just killed. You know, I had that box doing so many things. Yeah. It was just dying. And it's true. It was dying a true. quick yep. death. You know what? Yeah. If I was considering 2011 against the $400 license of 2012, I would just get one of these. True. Maybe not as the the... Maybe not this slim, but I would get the five bay Synology NAS. Yeah, but Dave, you could uh, you don't have the eight gig limit there with the uh, if you're running SBS 2011 essentials. Yeah, you can but run two many... CPUs, and uh, I'm not sure. Maybe Drashna will say how many gigs there. I think you can put 32 gigs in there. Or instead of using a Windows Home Server 2011, you can use storage. Windows, uh, which is what I use on my DX4000, Windows uh, Storage Server 2008 R2 Essentials, which backs up 25 PCs, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't have the media stuff built in, whereas uh, SBS 2011 Essentials has the domain stuff, but then you're allowed two CPUs, 25 users. But then again, that one's not, it's not 50 bucks, it's a couple hundred. Yeah, is it, is it a hundred? A couple hundred. Oh, a couple hundred, well, Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, it's it's hard for me to recommend a four hundred dollar license, especially when yeah. someone has to go out and you still have to get the hard drives, and then you still have to you know create a server to run that thing. And yeah, you may have the the parts laying around, but you know you're talking a minimum of five hundred dollar box, maybe a four hundred dollar box. You go AMD. Yeah. Uh, Drashna is also pointing out the uh, one thing I didn't mention was the uh, the Pixie Boot. Like, uh, remember how 2011 they're usually putting in your CD to restore your uh, your PC and all of that. Well, with 2012 R2 Essentials, now if you have that Windows Deployment Services set up on the server, then you could uh, just your PC boot up F12, boot up from the. It'll give you an option to boot from your network card, or you might have to set that in your BIOS. But uh, and then you just choose you know go directly to the server. But, you know, making yourself a little USB key to boot off is it's pretty simple. It's only a couple hundred meg, uh, yeah, you can use a, a couple hundred meg, U, or even a 64 meg USB stick, I think. Yeah. But it's I've a nice heard, option I've that re- that's built in. You don't have to go yeah, running for, uh, for anything. Absolutely. And I've restored a lot of PCs off of version 1 and 2011. I've I've never restored a PC uh, off of Essentials. I, it has yet to happen. We have so many mixed, you know, when we talk about this, there's such a, because it's it's really easy to overlook the price of 2012 and then look at all the features, right, and and go, well, the features are great, right? Hardware, hands down, 2012 is the best way to go when we're talk, taking advantage of all the latest hardware and all those kinds of things. But, but again, you have a price consideration, and, and I think, Dave, you're right. I mean, I really think we're to the point where, for the average consumer, right? If they're if they're going to make this, they're, they we send them to a QNAP or a Synology or a mm-hmm. right because these guys are hammering me on storage spaces as far as like yeah the average guy can't fix it if it breaks and those kinds of things and I get that. The other thing that drives me nuts is when we talk about when we when we push a lot of data to the cloud and then you're like yeah but Drashna just said this it takes months to get that back 
you don't have to get it back all at once, right? Typically, in most storage solutions, you're not accessing that information, all of it, all at the same time. If you have a massive failure, chances are you can trickle that data back if you need it, or just leave it in the cloud, for God's sakes. In a lot of cases, you don't even need it for the average You just had to say that, didn't you, Jim? So (laughs) there it goes. More well, to my inbox. Thank you. <laughs> well, and then it's like, I don't trust the cloud. Well, okay. I can't believe you trust the cloud. I can, just one copy, Jim? We just have this huge gamut. And I think this is good, right? I mean, keep hammering me on this stuff. It's fine. No, I'm just kidding. But but I, we have this huge gamut where everybody's like, some trust the cloud, some don't. Some want it local, some don't. Some want simplicity, some don't. Some want to use their MSDN subscription in a production environment. Some are okay with that. Some aren't. Right, so I'm going to use VMs. 2012's got VM capabilities. We've all run, <laughs> we've all used it. I shouldn't say all. Mm-hmm. Some of us have used that VM capability <laughs> to do all kinds of stuff with, and we know that's not the current in the current terms and services and licensing. That's not right. That's not, on essentials. That's not what it's built for. You got to go to 2012, and then you're talking about a $1,200 license for for the software. So, it's really, I guess, the point I'm saying is it's really hard to run head-to-head comparisons at this point without, I mean, because everybody's mileage may vary based on what their tolerance is and what they want to do with tech and how they want to do this. You know, these kind, how, how they want to get it done. You know, that kind of stuff is, uh, um, you know, you got to think about all those things. You know, the other thing uh, to think about is, uh, well, in I think in Windows 8, uh, from Windows 8 and 8.1, storage spaces is built in, right, if you get the pro version. So you can use storage spaces and say, I'm going to have a giant pool. Because, you know, a lot of people have a PC, and, you know, they have they have drives, they have space for four drives or five drives. So you, you can ha- you don't have to have this, put the storage, buy the server license and put all your stuff over there. You can say, you know what, I'll just put those drives in there, and I'll run I'll run a separate pool there. And Windows 8, you use the built-in uh, recovery stuff, right? So if your computer crashes, switch out the new drive, put in, you know, reboot or either switch out the drive or reinstall the OS. All your stuff comes back. You know, you install uh, drive, uh, you install store, you run storage spaces, and, uh, and there you go. Your your other option is uh, the other one, Drive Bender, right? They allow you, they have support for just like Windows, I think Windows 7, Windows 8. So, which in also in the server version. So you could say, I'll just make my PC my my mass storage uh, guy, and and go down that road. Well, and I'll say, I mean, use a Cronus. I mean, it depends on how many PCs you have, right? If you're just looking mm-hmm. for backup and stuff, use a Cronus and push that stuff to whatever a Synology, a Drobo, a QDAP, whatever, right? And then you've got file sharing too. It it will for for the average person it'll do all that stuff. So, again, it I think it's really really hard to have this perfect scenario. Uh, not everybody's going to agree on what they want, and some want to do more than others. And it's it's that's why I love this conversation. Man, the chat was a little slow, and all of a sudden <laughs> it's just flying. you mentioned storage spaces. It's yeah, they're not they don't want storage spaces on Windows 8. Josh no, doesn't like that. Not like it. But hey, you can use Drive Bender and Drive Pool. On a Windows 8, yeah, it just park a little park a little box in the corner, call it a server, you know, it'll, you'll make it happy. No one else in the house will care uh, that it's not a real server, but there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no, that'll work. Those are some great options. And that's you. the caveat. Yeah, but, on can you install like Drive ben, uh, Drive Pool on uh, on Windows 8? Justin is gonna have to get because I know Drive Bender you could, but I'm not sure if you can install Drive Pool on if it supports just the. Uh, just the Back me up on that. I I thought you could, but that's the the caveat on uh, a box like this. There's no bare metal backup, and a lot of people coming from 2011 yeah. or version one really like that safety net of having bare metal backup. Now, yeah. I personally have pulled that net away. I I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. We're running tablets and. Most of the time, yeah. So on I, Windows 8, you can just re, just put the OS back on it, right? Yeah, you just, just throw it back on. Zap it and throw your email address in there, and it yeah, says, "We burn What do you want me to put back? An You know, and I covered that. I covered that two years ago, Jim. Yeah. And I said, "The day is coming. The day is coming." So Drashna said yes. I don't know what he said yes to, because we're uh, 45. Also, Yoda says 2012 R2 Essentials for Academic Edition. For two hundred and fifty-seven, if you, I assume, if you have a .edu address, that that makes it compelling. I, if you can't, the only OS that stable bit doesn't support is XP. 
If you can't cop up with $257. <laughs> Read the terms and services carefully. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, because that expires when you leave the education. When you're, well, when you, it doesn't stop working. Well, but the the if we're gonna if we're gonna get all holy about you know, all who got righteous, holy? Yeah, I didn't play the, the MSG chat room. Part. No, the chat room is getting. The, there are some members, Drashna, in the chat room, who want to say you can't. You know, you can't use this. You know, terms and services for 2012. If you're going to use MSDN, it can't be used in a production environment. Blah blah blah. If you're going to use the education one, you got to follow the same rules. So make sure you read the terms and conditions and the education. Kindergarten account. <laughs> I have a kindergartner. Can I uh, get the two hundred fifty-seven dollars? As deal? long as you have a dot edu. So if you can convince your elementary school to, and many of them do, have a dot edu account. Oftentimes, DreamSpark would be another place to go to. I think to get some of that cheaper licensing. I'll have but to look that up. Check it. I don't. I honestly don't know what it is. I'm just trying to be fair to say, make sure you know. Microsoft does that for the the to get you hooked on it, right? While you're in that environment, and then Played they know the once you leave. Played the card, didn't you? Just had to play the Technic <laughs> card. Run the podcast, you guys. But Ken says education is never ending for life. I don't. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Drash this. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All in good spirit. All in good spirit. We we love to cuss and discuss. Um, and I think we've cussed and discussed ourselves out of a podcast. There's tons more. I mean, the forums, it's this wild and wonderful wilderness frontier of comfortable and safe. And then there's these guys that are just on the bleeding freaking edge. Is awesome. If you listen to this podcast, you better be a member of those forums. I want you to log in. in. There's actually a link on the right. Uh, purchase StableBit Drive Puller Scanner. StableBit Scanner. That's what I was trying to think of earlier. Um, and uh, Home Server Show gets a little uh, kickback. I think it's a couple cents, a couple pennies here and there. So if you buy it via that link. But also, I. You know, I put stuff out there that I, if I re if I use it, I you know I recommend it. So that's what I've done out there. The the forums is just awesome. Um, there's a new box out there listing the Geeks Networks uh, forums. So we have four forums now. We've got HomeAutomationForums.com. We've got SmartwareForums.com. I don't have on my G Watch, and I'd show you. Uh, of course, we have SurfaceGeeks.net or SurfaceGeeks.com. And then also, if you're Gen Eighter. Um, Media Smart Server. If you're a Gen 8 uh, user, you want to get the um, the new drive bracket from uh, Kevin Schoonover. There's a there's a link out on the forums on the side box where you can do that. There's a podcast player. You can pop out in a box the latest podcast, listen to it, and uh, browse the forums. And also we've got the YouTube box sitting up there ready for you. Now. Guys, I'm talking about the forums because I've got something for the meetup, folks. If you're coming to meetup, so 34, what is it, Jim? 34, 24, days. 24 days. 55 in 24 oh, days. Yeah, 24 days. 34 and 24. If you're coming to meetup, I'm going to give you something, and it's going to be cool. It's going to be really cool. So that's all I can say. That's all I can say. I'm really excited about it. You know, Jim, every year I, I do something. You know, I always do something. You're for like me Santa to, Claus. Let's just I, say like Santa, Claus. Like Santa Claus. I, I do. I like to give back. You do. You do I a nice do. job of it too. And I, I like to, I like surprises and I like doing things for people. I like surprising them. Like last year, I, you know, I gave Jim a Synology. And he went home with a Synology. Now he knows about Synology when we talk about it and stuff like that. Um, but this year, I have a gift for every single. It's not. It's not a Synology. So just, just no. <laughs> you get a Synology, no. and you get a Synology, and you get a Synology. <laughs> not freaking Oprah, okay? Um, but I've got something for everybody, and it's it it's it's built around the forums. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be really cool. So maybe that thirty-four will go up. If that goes up up a little bit, maybe you're on the fence. 
So uh, I think you really should come to meet up. We're going to have a good time. Yeah, Dave, I was just looking in the forums there. Like you said, you know, it's a great uh, group of guys. And I noticed there, uh, like J.M. Wills, he's over 7,500 posts. That's, That's crazy. Um, yeah, and Icon is over 13,000. He's almost at 13,500. It's been a while since we've we've uh, caught up on uh, Overall post top numbers. posters. Let me look. J.M. Wills. You know, he's he's always like one step behind Icon, right? Yeah. Icon will say something, you know, short and sweet about the post, and J.M. Wills will be right there with him. Just right there with him. You know what's cool? Yeah. When I look down this list, um, I see a lot of green. I see a lot of green, meaning uh, a lot of donating members. So they're, they're a member of that club where they've, they've donated something to, to the community. We help pay the bills that way. I see a lot of moderators, too, and administrators. I like that, too. That is, that's very cool. Lone Wolf. I haven't seen Lone Wolf in a while. Time Kills. He's always out there. Tony Rayner's always out there. Drashna, C.S. Kinney, Die Hard. Deviant. The BYOB guys. Scoondog. Joe Miner. J.M. Wills and Icon. I don't even know where I am in this list. I'm not in the top 20. Oh, I'm not even on the second page. We'll go to the third page. I'm not on the third page. This is <laughs> a slip slide, and it was bound to happen, right? You know, you gotta, you gotta let your kids go, right? <laughs> you gotta turn it loose. Uh... I don't even know where I'm at. I can't even find myself in the top. That's post. right. There's lots of great info out there. You know, it's um, it's uh, lots of good stuff. Oh, there I am. No, I'm in the first page. What am I talking about? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm seven on the list. Where's that list? What do you click on to get to that list? At the bottom of the, the home page of the forums, there's uh, overall top posters. So I am beating you, Mr. Die Hard, by some 400 posts. What? Yes. How did that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's it. I says I mean, they gotta be below you guys eight. for sure now. <laughs> Jim, I don't know where you're at. Yeah, I gotta. I had to. You're drop. up there. Seven hundred ninety-two posts. You're on the first page. Yeah, that's not bad. You're gonna get bumped. I know. I need to. I need to get in there and and uh, I need to icon it. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, yes. DVN uh -huh. and No Control. These guys have been asleep for a while, and they're still ahead of us. <laughs> yeah. 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 Rich, Rich has been super busy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like a lot of these. Like me and you, Die Hard, we're listed on here uh, joining in 2008. A lot of these guys are... Drashna's 2008. Do we got a number? Like a, uh, a member number? Like which one on the chart we joined? I think I can look that up in the admin panel. I don't think I have a number, but I can look it up, you know. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yes. So 86,000 posts by 7,000 members. That is pretty neat. The most online was 228 people. That was done uh, this year, February. So help us beat that. Join the forums. Sorry uh, that we've got, gone on for a couple of minutes about uh, the community there, but uh, I thank you each and every one of you out there for... Um, God, Dave's eyesight is going. Yes, it is. I just... Went back uh, right over my uh, name. Couldn't see it. <clears throat> All right, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming out, John. Thanks for having me. You bet. For Jim and John, this is Dave, Home Server Show number two sixty seven. We'll see you here and back in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Bye bye. Got it. Boom, like that. Boom, just like that. Yep, yep, yep. Thanks, guys. All right, Thanks. fellas. How long did we go? Um, We were like a minute, uh, an hour 20. Oh, that's all. That's
That wasn't that bad. No, oh, it's good. It's good. Not a it's lot good. to talk about. It's good. That's yeah, good to catch up on some of that. It's good to have. It was good to have a good spirited discussion in there. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's been, a, been a while. We've kind of been blah 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 this and blah blah blah. That. It's good to have a little battle. I like it. I like the <laughs> spirited battles. I like when I get called out. Yeah, does drive pool go on window seat? <laughs> Yoda says he donated and he's not marked. Yoda, you donated uh, and you're not uh, marked. Send him a green hat. I can <laughs> I can mark him up for sure. I don't I don't remember, Yoda. I apologize. <laughs> I just thought about that one. Send him a green hat and you know Yoda, right? <laughs> he's green. <laughs> he's kinda green. Uh, uh. Uh -huh. Let me look up Yoda. It's always a sad. It's always sad when you run out of beverage. Empty. Yeah, I'm empty too. Empty beverage. I do have a little bit of Gatorade left, but. So. Hey, have you seen those new Gatorade commercials with Peyton Manning in them? Mm. -mm. Yeah, they got some new commercials come out. Just hilarious. <laughs> you have to. You have to watch them. Yeah. They're not out yet, but you can catch them if you if you Google Peyton Manning Gatorade. You'll get the page, and there's seven or eight of them. Cam Newton's also in them, in some of them as well, which is pretty funny. But uh, it, I won't spoil the fun. You'll just have to go mm -hmm. and watch them. All right, we'll go watch. Jim, you'll have to give. Um, who's saying there? You have to give uh, Chris uh, Lux a call. Yeah, we're gonna see. see Dave and I are gonna Dr. try and Lux. see Chris. I've been following him on Facebook. We're gonna try and see him when we're up in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Seattle's locked in. For the most part. I got to book my flight, I guess. Yeah, no, me too. I, I got to work on how I get to uh, from the airport to the campus, though. It's yeah, quite an expensive Chris... cab. Yeah, I've got the same deal because I'll be coming in from the train. So Where's the train coming out. in? I don't know. I haven't even looked. My sister, and I'm not even for sure I'm going to do that. It's just my sister's in Portland, and um, the... Um, and she's like, man, if you're out here, you got to come see me. So I try, I'm thinking I'm trying to get a Friday afternoon flight, get in there late Friday night, spend Saturday with them, all day Saturday, and then Sunday, whenever, catch the train. It's a, a couple hours north. Mm -hmm. Let me um, let me see if I can find out. Well, that's when I would fly in is Sunday. Let's see if I can figure out where. The train station comes in. I think it comes in downtown. And we're, are we down? I'm trying to remember where where are we? We're at? across the bridge, dude. It's I in, tell you, I set my. In, uh, yeah. What's up? I set my uh, server to um, when we started the podcast. My 22 essential server. I set it to do Windows updates. 29 updates. It's still going. It's on 21 <laughs> of 29. It's over an hour ago. Sorry, Jim. No, you're good, man. I'm just... King Street Station is downtown. Um, let's get directions to where the Hyatt, right? Hyatt Regency in Bellevue? Is that right? There? Oh, jeez. <laughs> what? Yowza. That's 37 minutes away. From the train station? Yeah, because we're at the Hyatt Regency Bellevue, right? I think so. Yeah, because it's basically downtown. The airport is... The well, airport's probably farther. Yeah, SeaTac is even farther south. Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder if I could get Sarab. I've got a buddy there in town. I wonder if we bought him dinner, if he would... That's what we did for Chris, just buy him dinner and mm -hmm. shuttle us around. We'd have to... We'd have to. He's down south, anyways. I could have him pick you up and meet me if you, you know. Yeah. Now Sunday's that thing, though, that MVP thing. Yeah. At that hotel. But we want to check in at. We want to check in first, right? Yeah.
<laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to shut this down. Okay, adios, mes amis. Later, YouTube. Later, YouTubers. Later, chat room. Thanks for See hanging you. out with us. Thanks, John. Bye-bye.